أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله أصحابه أجمعين I welcome everybody uh, who have joined this session, who have registered for this session, who have taken out time to listen to Dr. Adnan today on the topic, topic of understanding the Kaful Sharia compliant risk mitigation tool. All right. So all of you know the learning outcomes today. A lot of people who have already sent questions. I have a long list of questions. So we will not be taking live questions. However, I suggest if you have questions, please type in Q&A chat. Do not type the questions in chat. Uh, just type the questions in Q&A tab so that it's easy to answer for Dr. Adnan. A brief introduction to Dr. Adnan. Dr. Adnan Malik is certified Takapur practitioner, researcher, academician. He has worked over 15 years in his repeated life in general insurance in Takapur companies. He holds a doctorate degree in Islamic business and finance. He has authored three books on Takaful, including last one published by Singer Nature, Springer Nature. He has also authored multiple case studies and research paper on Takaful. So be mindful that today you are meeting an expert on Takaful. Presently, he is teaching Takaful and serving as a head of industry academia linkage center for excellence in Islamic Finance Institute Management Science Pakistan. He has conducted various trainings and different topics related to Takaful, including risk management, Islamic banking through Takaful, Banka Takaful, underwriting and claims management. I welcome you, Dr. Adnan. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for giving your time. Uh, thank you for uh, letting the family of Taif to meet you and to learn from you. The floor thank is yours. Uh, and uh, please, you may continue the presentation. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum uh, Thank you, Hassan, for uh, introducing me to the audience. Uh, and I'm thankful to Taif Digital Technologies uh, for letting me interacting with, the, with this uh, lovely audience, uh, which has connected in a overwhelming uh, number. Uh, I'm grateful to all of uh, these participants who have uh, taken out their uh, precious time and uh, have joined the session. Uh, I'll be trying to make this session more and more knowledgeable. Uh, and uh, we'll be trying to uh, uh, address the basics of the Kaful and we'll be uh, answering your questions as well. Uh, uh, since we were supposed to uh, uh, pick some uh, areas uh, regarding the Kaful, uh, which in this session uh, uh, are this uh, introduction and history of the Kaful and how it is different from insurance and uh, Sharia compliance of the Kaful, uh, how the Kaful is performing globally and currently available the Kaful services. So um, uh, these are the uh, areas which we'll be, we'll be discussing today. And, but but uh, our discussion uh, uh, can go beyond these topics. If uh, you have uh, questions uh, regarding any area of the Kaful, in addition to these areas, you may ask, uh, and as uh, Brother Hassan has mentioned, you can uh, uh, paste your questions in the question and answer uh, uh, window. And then I'll be comfortably answering those, those questions once we are done with these uh, uh, areas for discussion. Uh, so uh, starting with the introduction and history of the Kaful, Beside that, uh, let me share uh, the images of the books which I have authored, which uh, Brother Asan uh, has mentioned. Uh, just uh, uh, it's the book which was published in 2019 by uh, Springer Nature and uh, Palgrave Macmillan, uh, which is one of the leading uh, uh, global publisher. Uh, it's UK based, and um, uh, it, this book is available on. Uh, 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 Palgrave website and on Amazon as well. And uh, they have recently 
uh, uh, conveyed me that uh, it's been downloaded in more than 57 countries and several universities have uh, <coughs> adopted this book as a reference book. Excuse me. So it was my first book, which was published in uh, was published in 2016. Uh, uh, prior to that, uh, Springer Nature book, and uh, it was also awarded best book of the year by Higher Education Commission of Pakistan at that time. And that's my third book, which is in the uh, national language of uh, Pakistan, uh, which which is Urdu. So uh, these three books uh, I have so far authored. And uh, uh, the fourth book uh, is in the pipeline. Uh, it's uh, on the way. I'm working on it. And it will be the second international edition. And uh, Springer Nature has agreed to publish it as well, inshallah. So uh, coming towards the uh, uh, topic area of uh, this session, Introduction and History of the Kafal. Uh, first, I'll try to introduce the concept of the kafil, and then we'll go a little bit uh, in uh, towards the history. Uh, the kafil is uh, uh, basically uh, Arabic word, and the root word is kafala, which means guarantee. Uh, uh, in the, the kafil context, the guarantee word is used that uh, people who are contributing into a common fund they guarantee each other that if something wrong happens to them and there is a financial consequences of it, then people will be mutually uh, uh, compensating the affected person. So the, they guarantee their help for each other. <coughs> uh, it's, it's not a Quranic word. Uh, it has not been mentioned in Quran, but it's an Arabic word. Uh, which means mutual production and joint guarantee, as I mentioned. And operationally, the Kafal refers to participants mutually contributing to a common fund with the purpose of having mutual indemnity in case of peril or loss. It's like a common fund. We normally go for uh, excursions. We normally go for outing with friends. And sometimes we uh, make a common fund for meeting those expenses. We contribute into that fund. And the aim of that common fund is to uh, uh, pay for the excursion expenses. So uh, similarly, we can also create a common fund for any uh, 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 natural disaster or any uh, uh, death of our group member or uh, 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 motor vehicle accident of a um, member person. So we can make a common fund and we contribute into that common fund. And if any defined loss occurs, we can uh, help the other member with that fund. So the CAFL operates on this uh, basic principle. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not a rocket science, but it uh, uh, works on logics and uh, uh, mutual indemnity and with the uh, uh, thinking inclusively and uh, onboarding more and more people in the group so that we may help each other in losses. So uh, the Kaful is the Islamic alternative of uh, conventional insurance. It's uh, the, uh, the it, normally we introduce the Kaful as an alternative of insurance. But I claim that uh, the kafal is more uh, old than insurance. So uh, conventional insurance should have been uh, declared as an alternative of the kafal. Later on, I'll uh, uh, justify this point as well. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, it is also mentioned uh, in hadith. Uh, uh, like when we justify the kafal, uh, we always uh, say that uh, our religion uh, encourages risk management techniques. Like our religion uh, tells us not to uh, spend overly, not to be, uh, 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 not to go for overspending. We should keep our savings. We should, uh, 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 we, we should keep some money for uh, for some bad time. 
like there is a hadith in which uh, uh, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, says that it's better to leave your uh, uh, your your kids with some money instead of leaving uh, them nothing and they go for begging. So uh, planning for future is encouraged by the by the religion. And uh, uh, it is also supported with a hadith that once uh, a person came to see Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he didn't tie his camel. <coughs> uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked him that why you didn't tie camel. He said, I have left it with the, with the tawakkal on Allah. And uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, advised him first tie your camel and then leave it at the buckle of Allah. So it means we have to take our precautionary measures. Uh, so if something uh, wrong happens, we should have some mechanism through which we recover some of our uh, uh, financial loss or the expenses. So uh, in this way, the kaful is encouraged by the religion uh, as a risk management technique. Uh, so let me go through this uh, hadith. It's mentioned in hadith which provides guidance for Muslims to live by. O oh, Messenger of Allah, shall I tie the camel and rely upon Allah or leave it loose and rely upon Allah? He said, tie it and rely on Allah. Uh, and uh, when we go, if we go into past, like uh, pre-Islam uh, uh, Arab, in Arabs, uh, uh, merchant used to go in caravans to take their uh, merchandise for selling. They used to travel in caravans, uh, and there they, they used to be that looting as well on the way. Uh, so there was a practice that if somebody advised them not to go on a on a specific route and go on another route. Uh, so the person used to take the guarantee and used to provide the guarantee that if you follow a particular path, uh, no harm will come to you. And if any harm came to the caravan, that person was supposed to compensate those uh, 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 those merchants. So that's mentioned in this uh, this slide in Arabic. Zaman khatrul tariq. Zaman mean the man means guarantee. Khatr means danger, and tariq means way passage of route. Merchants used to travel in caravans from one place to another in order to trade. It was not unusual for caravans to be looted. Therefore, looting was a risk that merchants had to consider. To manage this risk, practice was followed where someone would advise the caravan to take a particular route that in his opinion was safe. So it was a pre-Islam uh, practice and uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, allowed it to practice even after Islam. So uh, it provides a base for, uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, developing a Takafi mechanism. And then there is another uh, uh, system in Arab which which we, uh, which we call Akela. Uh, Arab tribes used to follow a practice in which if it was proved that a person had murdered someone, the person who had committed the murder had to compensate the victim's family. If the murderer's family didn't have enough money, their tribe would compensate the victim's family. Most of these practices were common before Islam. They were allowed to continue by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So for Muslims, such risk management techniques are allowed. So let me elaborate this Akela system. Like if in a tribe, if somebody uh, 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 had murdered someone and the, the, the deceased family uh, accused that person and demands for compensation. And if the murderer didn't have that uh, required money. So the tribe of the uh, 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 murderer uh, used to collect money and to pay on behalf of uh, their family person. And uh, a few months back, I went to Africa, uh, Somaliland, and in Somaliland, they were, uh, uh, they were uh, starting their uh, mandatory third party motor insurance, motor takaful, <coughs> in which uh, they were uh, discussing the, uh, the, the maximum liability, which uh, 
uh, a, a company can have if a driver uh, accidentally uh, kills someone or if somebody dies with a motor car accident. And the amount they were discussing uh, was around 20 to 30,000 US dollars. And I told them that it's a very uh, big amount. And they said that it's in our practice that if uh, the, the, the wrongdoer uh, didn't have that money, then the tribe uh, used to collect that money uh, for that person. So I recall that this, this is the same practice which was happening uh, uh, in pre-Islam. And that's still in practice in the, in Somaliland. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, these practices were there even before Islam and they were allowed to continue by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So these practices provide a base uh, for the kafir and uh, 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 that justify the use of the kafir. So they, it's a little bit of history. And uh, the book which I've authored, I have further explained uh, these, uh, uh, these historical perspectives. So uh, in some later sessions, we can have a more detailed discussion on it. So coming towards uh, uh, the history of the kafil, that how it started, when it started, and uh, how, uh, uh, how many companies are now operating, uh, so uh, let me tell you that uh, first the Kafir company was established in 1979 in Sudan. In the same year, uh, another the Kafir company was established in Bahrain. And then there was a uh, uh, growth scene in the Middle East and in the Far East in Malaysia. And several of the Kafir companies were established. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, the Kafir Act was passed from the parliament in 1984, which was a very significant pro uh, uh, progress. And uh, still, Malaysia is leading the family Takaful market. Like in life Takaful, Malaysia is leading the uh, whole market, while in non life Takaful, Middle East and uh, Saudi Arabia are at the leading position. So as I mentioned in 1979, first the Kafir company was established in Sudan. Uh, in the same year, another the Kafir company was established in Bahrain. Uh, in 1987, the Kafir companies were established in the Middle East and Malaysia. In Malaysia, the Kafir Act was passed by the parliament in 1984. Uh, and I give this credit to the Malaysian government that say now they are leading the family the Kafir market and that the Kafir Act has a uh, big uh, credit for that uh, leading. So uh, let me go to the uh, some answer question answer session. If you have asked any uh, questions, so let me see that. Um, uh, so, sir, I, you keep sharing your screen, and I will ask the questions on your. Okay. Behalf. Okay. Fine. 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 Actually, I don't. I don't want this session a one-way traffic. So one -way. If, if, if somebody uh, want to ask a question in between, so I'm, right. I'm open to that. All right. So we, we have questions here, but uh, okay. The pattern basically usually is that once you finish your session, then everybody okay. is up, uh, like okay. lining up their questions. So already we have like one, five. Five, six, four, five, six, seven questions. We have already lined up. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Uh, so uh, we go with your uh, practice, and uh, first we'll uh, try to finish our content. Yeah, then because come most the of questions. the mo some of the questions, I'm sure you will be answering during your presentation. So it's best you finish that in okay. uh, 40 minutes. The last 15 minutes will focus on the uh, answering the questions. Got you. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Asim. Thank you, no Asim. So, uh, world average penetration of insurance is around 6% of its gross uh, domestic product. Uh, in 2014, global insurance premium was totaled to around 4778 uh, billion dollars, US billion dollars. While in 2021, assets of the CAFL companies were around 73 billion dollars with an annual growth of 17%. Now you can see that there is a big uh, uh, scope for the Kafal, a long way to go. So we have just started our uh, journey in the Kafal, and it's a long way to go. Uh, so um, uh, coming towards uh, how the Kafal and insurance are different, 
uh, insurance uh, is a risk transfer mechanism in which uh, people transfer their risk to the insurance company. And uh, insurance company is responsible for uh, all for paying for all kind of uh, losses, uh, defined losses. While uh, the TAFL mechanism is based on sharing. Uh, so how it happens, I'll explain that with a with the, with the model as well. Then insurance doesn't care about avoiding riba. So two types of riba involves in insurance. Uh, in investment, there is Riba on Quran, which is in uh, uh, connected with the with the lending borrowing uh, process, and then there is Riba on Hadith as well in insurance. Uh, how it is present, I'll explain it a bit later through a model. The uh, kaful is Riba free. <coughs> its process doesn't contain any kind of Riba. Uh, uh, either it is Ribal Quran or uh, Ribal Hadith, both kinds of riba. They are non existing in the kaful. In insurance, there is excessive uncertainty. Wherein in the kaful, there is uncertainty, but its level is minor and uh, its level is up to the uh, tolerance level of uh, religion. Uh, then in insurance, there is gambling, while in the kaful, gambling is avoided. How it all happens, I'll explain that uh, with the help of a model, which uh, I try, I'm trying to uh, 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 explain the differences between insurance and the CAF. So uh, it's a simplified model of insurance. Uh, in insurance, uh, we take uh, insurance companies take premium from the uh, from the uh, customers. And uh, the nature of uh, insurance, the nature of insurance agreement is sale and purchase. Insurance companies sell their insurance coverage, while uh, uh, the customers are the buyers of insurance. So the nature of uh, insurance agreement is buying and selling. Uh, it's like uh, in the similar way that when we deposit money in a conventional bank, uh, uh, it's best basically a banking transaction, but the nature of agreement is that we are lending our money to the bank and the bank offers us interest on that. So the basic agreement in a conventional bank between the bank and the depositor is lending and borrowing. In the same way, when it comes to conventional insurance, then uh, when we are taking insurance from an insurance company, it is basically a buying and selling agreement. So insurance company is a seller and a client is a buyer. So uh, <clears throat> when uh, people pay premium and buy insurance from insurance company, insurance company keep that money into this pool fund. And uh, uh, since the claim doesn't occur or the loss doesn't come on day first, so there is always a time gap between the premium payment and the claim or the loss. So to take the advantage of the time gap, insurance companies invest that money as well. So let me take uh, an example that if uh, insurance company is in, uh, if uh, insurance company get one billion dollars in the premium in premium uh, from the people and that 1 billion is kept in this pool fund. And when that $1 billion is invested, say uh, uh, 100 million or 10 crore investment income comes on it. So uh, one, $1 billion is the principal and uh, 100 million or 10 crore is lying in the, is, has generated in the form of income on that investment. So in the claim fund, we'll be having 1 billion and 10 crore uh, in the claim fund. So how that uh, investment income comes in, normally insurance companies invest their money in different avenues, but since they want to have a safe return and best return, so they normally invest more of their money with, uh, with, with uh, interest bearing loans in conventional banks. So if you are providing a loan or deposit to a conventional bank 
and the conventional bank is paying interest on that. So that interest, we call it Ribal uh, Quran. Uh, so, and that is forbidden. So that first objection on insurance from the religious point of view comes on this practice, that there is an involvement of Ribal Quran and insurance mechanism, and that is in the investment side. So, um, uh, uh, when that uh, in the in this claim fund now we have uh, one billion and ten crore uh, in this claim fund now all the year normally uh, claims happens insurance companies pay those claims so if we uh, see that the claims are say ninety crore then thirty crore will be the profit of the insurance company uh, and if the claims exceed that uh, 1 billion and 10 crore, then there'll be a loss for the insurance company. So um, uh, if we go for the second objection on insurance, that is uh, of the Ribal Hadith. Uh, and Ribal Hadith uh, exists in the uh, in, in a sale and purchase agreement. When you um, uh, exchange uh, similar commodities in unequal amount, or if there is a time gap in it, then Ribal Hadith also comes in. Now, if we see, if I take uh, uh, motor insurance and say my vehicle worth is say $10,000 and I pay $500 as a premium. And if that car is stolen, then I get $10,000 uh, in the form of claim. So uh, uh, there is a sale and purchase uh, and the money which I'm paying, I paid 500, I'm, but I'm getting $10,000. But since it's a sale and purchase agreement and in Ribal Hadith, it, uh, Ribal Hadith tells us that uh, in exchange agreements, we cannot exchange uh, the same item in unequal quantities. So there is an exchange of money and there is a difference in its uh, quantity. So Ribal Hadith also applies on insurance. So these are the uh, riba related uh, objections on uh, insurance, which Islamic scholars normally object. Then there is a third um, objection, which is of uncertainty. Uh, our religion doesn't allow uh, any uncertainty in sale and purchase transactions. So when there is a sale and purchase transaction, and if uh, uncertainty comes in, that, that agreement spoils. It's uh, the way like we buy a Pepsi bottle from a shopkeeper and we pay the price, but the shopkeeper tells us that he will deliver that bottle to us if there is rain. Like uh, he connects that delivery of Pepsi bottle with the uh, with raining, so <clears throat> uh, uncertainty comes into it. In the same way, insurance company says that yes, I have sold you out that insurance, but I'll pay you when the claim occurs or if the loss occurs. So uncertainty comes in that if I'll get money only if my car is stolen or if it car, my car gets damaged. So that uncertainty comes into insurance. That's why uh, uh, Islamic scholars object insurance on that as well. Uh, then comes the gambling side of it. Like if there are more accidents, uh, insurance companies will suffer loss. And if there are less accidents, insurance company will gain a profit on it. But uh, um, is there any control of insurance company on accidents in case of motor insurance and in case of deaths if it's a life insurance? So uh, since it's beyond the control of insurance company, so that uh, gambling objection also applies on uh, insurance. Uh, in some later sessions, we can explain these uh, differences in a more detailed way, but uh, since it's an introductory session, so I'm not going into much of the details. So when it comes to Takaful, uh, how Takaful addresses these uh, objections, now you can see it's a simplified Takaful Wakala model, and Takaful companies also collect uh, money from the uh, customers, but 
the agreement of the kaful is not of sale and purchase but it's a, a contract of the borrow contract of contribution in which people contribute into common fund and the kaful company only takes its wakala fee which is its administrative fee or its service charges uh insurance company owns this fund in insurance but in the kaful company it doesn't own this fund it is only a caretaker of this fund and in the same way say if i suppose if i take that example 1 billion is contributed by people the same figures which i took for insurance so 1 billion uh, 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 is the contribution which people pays to the company Uh, and say if uh, the kaful company is taking 15% of its wakala fee <coughs> then uh, the kaful company will take 15 crore at its uh, wakala fee while the remaining 85 crore will lie will come into this fund uh, the kaful company will invest that 85 crore in halal investments so uh, there is no chance of uh, ribal uh, quran or no chance of objection of ribal quran on that now again investment income comes into this claim fund so 85 crore was invested and say 5 crore investment income came on it so 90 crore is the claim fund and in 90 crore all of, all the year claims occurs people uh, people report those claims to the kaful company the kaful company pays those claims and if say claims were 90 crore then 5 crore will be surplus and that 5 crore surplus it is refundable to those customers who didn't claim since the surplus doesn't belong to the kaful company because it has already taken its wakala fee so uh, uh, that's why the gambling objection doesn't apply on insurance com- the takaful companies because it is uh, not retaining the surplus here so uh, uh, that's a simplified model uh, and uh, uh, we can discuss it further in some later sessions as well so uh, let me move to the other topic how the kaful is performing globally uh, today more than 330 plus the kaful companies are operating around the world in 47 countries and uh, in 2021 assets of the kaful companies were around 73 billion dollars with an annual growth of 17% <coughs> top countries uh, by the kaful assets like this 73 billion dollars which of the country owns how much in this uh, total now here we can see iran uh, holds 30 billion dollars so the rebi 18 billion malaysia 12 billion here i would like to add that uh, there are only three countries which are having uh, only islamic financial system that's iran second one is sudan and third one is somaliland which i went there in uh, in march uh, for participating in in a conference as a speaker there and there i came to know that they are also following only islamic financial system they don't have a conventional system so iran so the arabia malaysia uae indonesia turkey so uh, and there are 335 total uh, takaful operators in the world currently available takaful services takaful companies are offering uh, life and disability coverages uh, in the same way insurance companies are providing uh, they are providing general takaful including motor fire earthquake floods burglary terrorism marine cash and health etc machinery breakdown electronic equipment the kaful uh, so uh, uh, it it was a short presentation on the kaful um, uh, i can talk more but uh, it's better that i take your uh, questions so uh, brother asan uh, can we move towards the question answer session all right sir inshallah we can move to question answer session okay, okay. 